but now my desire and will, like a wheel that spins with even motion, were revolved by the love that moves the sun and the other stars. And that's the end of the poem, uh, which ends exactly the way uh, with Dante doing two things. One, seeing the prime mover and understanding the prime mover, not the way he did at the beginning of Paradiso One, but love. It was not the, 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 the definition of God as the prime mover, you remember, seemed to have a limitation for Dante, it was the prime mover moves the universe and somehow then detaches, disengages himself from it. Now Dante sees the prime move, the motion as a motion of love, the universe as a universe of love, but holds the world together and prevents it from falling apart is exactly this power, prevents it from chaos, it's this power called love. So the whole of the universe is in motion, love that moves the sun and the other stars. And the only thing stable, the only thing that makes it cohere is, uh, is this love. But using the same language here of love uh, that moves the sun and the other stars, okay, it's a universe of love, we understand that. Dante uses the, symmetrically, the same, the same phrase, the stars, most the sun and the other stars, in Inferno, at the end of Inferno, at the end of Purgatory. Fair, you remember that? And then now I was, I, I was uh, cleansed enough to come back and look at the stars, the end of Purgatory. And then now Virgil and I finally managed to come back and see the stars. Now Dante says, uh, the, the love that moves the sun and the other stars. What he's really doing, is placing himself immediately with this line right back on Earth. He's here with us, looking up at the stars. It's the line that shifts, allows him to shift from the moment of this vision that he has, a vision that is the vision of, uh, of the incarnation at the end, that is to say, his own, our own likeness, that's all he sees, that's all he remembers, and then comes back to Earth. But it also means that this line places Dante exactly in Inferno One. And this is the story of the poem. The story of the poem, we have been reading the poem as an account of an experience of a pilgrim who goes from the dark wood in Inferno One to the beatific vision, whatever he remembers of it, and then comes back to tell us about it. What in effect we are also discovering in this reading of the poem is that by the end of the poem, Dante says, now my journey starts the real journey was this poem here. So we are in a sense, by that last line, caught in the circle of Dante's telling, in the drama of Dante's story. We read the poem, which is a kind of journey for us, then now we reread because we want to tell our own story. And then we want to go on rereading it uh, once again. Do you see what I mean? It's a sort of, uh, uh, if you wish, uh, uh, witty even, uh, uh, way for Dante to say this poem will hold you, uh, and it's meant to hold you, and I wish it holds you. Uh, so you can see the poem is both a journey and the telling of the journey endlessly, like the movement of the sun and the other stars.